Hey everyone, the small engine mechanic here. Today we are going to be working on a four cycle Troy built snow thrower with a no start issue. It has sat for almost two years. First, we will need to remove the choke lever. Then the two Phillips head screws on the front of the cover. Then we will need to loosen the top bolt. Then the cover should just come right off. You'll notice there's a ground wire which we will remove in a few minutes. We need to pinch off the fuel line. Now I'm removing the ground wire to make it easier to work around. Now, remove the fuel hose clamp. Once removed, simply pull the fuel hose off. Now, before you pull the carburetor, you might want to take a picture of where the throttle linkage is connected to the governor arm and the throttle plate. Now we will remove the primer hose and we can test it for leaks by simply covering one end and pushing the primer. If the primer is pushing against resistance, then there is no leaks. To remove the carburetor, we can easily remove these two Phillips head screws. Then the carburetor will come loose. Disconnect the throttle linkage from the governor arm and the carburetor is free from the unit. This is where the throttle linkage was located on this carburetor. These two screws hold the choke plate lever in place. We might need to remove one of the two screws, but we will get to that later. We're going to remove the throttle linkage and then the two bolts that hold the carburetor to the intake manifold. Now that the intake manifold has been removed, you will see it has two gaskets. This is for the intake to head gasket. And this is the intake to carburetor gasket. Located on the bottom of these models of carburetors is a manual drain valve so you can drain the fuel out at the end of the year. No one seems to use them. The fuel sample is dark with sediment in the bottom.
Now we're going to use a half inch socket and remove the bowl bowl. Then the bowl, as you can see, there is sediment inside. Also, now we're going to remove the carburetor bowl gasket. Flow pin. Float needle. and plastic emulsion tube. Different colors are different amounts of fuel. We are going to need to remove the emulsion tube and using a 90 degrees pick we can line it up and push the emulsion tube out the bottom of the carburetor. It might take a little bit. We will need to remove one of the bolts from the choke plate holder. If you try to use a screwdriver it will simply strip the screws so you can use a pair of pliers to help break them loose. Then you can use a screw gun or screwdriver to remove the screw on the left, which will give you more access. And once you pop the emulsion tube out, you simply need to remove it from the carburetor. This emulsion tube should have two O-rings on it, but it only has one. The other O-ring is located in the emulsion tube section of the carburetor. We can use another pick to get that O-ring out. And there we have it. Where the fuel enters and meets the needle, a needle seat will need to be removed. You can use a pick to remove the seat. And now the carburetor is ready for cleaning. We use an ultrasonic cleaner for cleaning carburetors. There are carburetor cleaner kits for sale at auto stores that you can simply open the can and drop your carburetor in which will clean it out. An example is on the screen now. But be sure to follow all of the manufacturer's instructions. The bowl and the bowl nut will also go into the carb cleaning processing. Now that the carburetor and parts have been cleaned, we will need some extra parts and they will be a carburetor rebuild kit part number 631021B.
Emulsion tube O-rings part number 632547 and we will need two of them. Carburetor to intake gasket part number 26756. And an intake manifold to head gasket part number 33673A. And just in case your emotion tube gets damaged, this color tube is part number 632745. All these parts should be available from any small engine lawn care mechanic shop. First, we're going to install the new O-rings on the emulsion tube. If the O-ring is still on the emulsion tube, you can remove it. Simply put a new O-ring on the short end and another on the long end as such. Then we're going to reinstall it along and first back into the carburetor. If you have a small punch you can use it to seat the emulsion tube. The bull nut has a couple small holes that you need to make sure are clean. We can use the old needle hanger wire to ensure the holes are clear. This is the needle wire that you can bend straight. The first hole is in the middle of the top. When cleaning you should be able to see through the side holes and see the wire. The other hole is located at the top of the threads and is very small. When clearing this one, you should be able to see the wire through the hole in the top. Now we are going to open the carburetor rebuild kit. Install the bull nut gasket on the nut. The new needle needs to be installed on the hanger wire. You should hear a little click when the needle is installed correctly. Next, we will install the needle seat on the fuel discharge side. The seat has two sides, one is ribs and the other is flat. We need to install the ribs facing into the carburetor. Using a punch you can push the seat into the bottom. Now we will hang the needle on the float and install it back onto the carburetor.
Then install the float pin, and the bowl gasket will be next. The bowl gasket helps to hold the pin in before the bowl is reinstalled. Now we can reinstall the bowl. The lower side should be opposite of the hinge for the float. Now we can reinstall the bolt nut and tighten it down. We can reinstall the choke plate screw. Be sure to tighten the other screw back up also. I'm testing to ensure the choke is working. Now we can reinstall the throttle linkage. On the intake manifold, we can remove both of the gaskets. And using a new intake to carburetor gasket, we can reinstall the intake manifold to the carburetor. and tighten the bolts back up. Now we are ready to reinstall it onto the engine. The manifold to head gasket is designed so that you can reinstall the screws into the gasket and it will hold it for installation.
Then we can reconnect the throttle linkage to the governor arm and swing the carburetor into position. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, we can tighten the screws back up. I like to turn the screws a little each time to ensure the manifold seats are correct. Now that the carburetor has been reinstalled, I'm pulling a fuel sample to see what the fuel in the fuel tank looks like. As you can tell it is dark and it has debris floating in the fuel. I will need to drain the fuel tank. Now that the fuel tank has been drained and cleaned, we can reconnect the hose to the carburetor. Then the hose clamp. Then the primer hose. Now, we are ready to reinstall the carburetor cover. I will first put the grounding wire back on, but keep it loose. Making sure that the cover goes on the top bolt and reinstalling the two Phillips head cover screws. Now we can tighten the screws, the top retaining screw, and the grounding screw. Our last step is to reinstall the choke lever. Now we will give it some fresh fuel. And check the oil. It is dirty, but it is full. So let's give this a try. Three pumps on the primer turn into key on, but the carburetor choke and give it a pull. The engine sounds like it's running well and is throwing snow. Let's look at the paddles. They look good too. So, that can only 
only mean one thing. It looks like another one is good to go.